live on the Tigers Media Network. A beautiful April afternoon for softball. Today, the 5-11 and 11 Urbana Tigers taking on the Centennial Chargers. First pitch from Raven Russell to center fielder Kylie Lady of Centennial. Strike one. And I mentioned this beautiful April afternoon. Perfect backdrop for this crosstown rivalry game. Chargers have crossed Bright Street. Come over to our softball field. Now 0-2 to center fielder Kylie Lady. Raven Russell on the mound for Urbana. Count's going to go to 1-2. and two. That one was a little high and inside. 1-2 to Lady, and the count is even at 2-2. Two two. Storylines that we will watch today. Raven Russell missed the first portion of this season with a foot injury. Back in the rotation now for the Tigers, very talented pitcher, and the Tigers will need her to clutch up down the stretch as they look to bounce back from a rough start to the season. Lady pops this one up to first base, and Esri Vesley makes the play. One away now on the top of the first. And now we'll see the pitcher for Centennial, Nini Leong. So one up, one down for the Chargers. Leong in now, she's the pitcher for Centennial. Addie Archer on deck at second base. First pitch fouled into the parking lot. Falls in the asphalt, doesn't hit any cars. After Archer at second base, batting fourth will be Hannah Lachinsky at shortstop. Lee Lachinsky after batting fifth at third base. Then it's Megan Weiss at catcher. Ashley Kirby at first base. Casey Pickens the designated hitter. And Julia Lee in right field. This is inside. Count will now be even at one and one. Aaron Wright usually behind the plate for the Tigers. She's at third base today, so the battery is Raven Russell and Casty Russell. How about that? As this one skips into Russell behind the plate. Two balls and one strike. And another one that just skips in there, three and one. Raven will have to battle back. And the Tigers need a strong top of the first inning here. They don't want to allow Centennial to get an early advantage. They want to go to the bottom of the first, ready to put up some runs. It'll be a walk to Leong, and Archer will stride in for Centennial. So one on and one out for Archer, the second baseman. And the first pitch from Russell as Archer shows bunt. Throw to first will be in time to retire Archer. Now Leong caught between second and third. She'll get back to second safely. So Hannah Lachinsky will stride in with two outs and a runner in scoring position. One three put out for Archer. And Lachinsky the shortstop. Up to bat in her jacket. And it is a little chilly out here in Urbana today. Uh, temperatures in the mid-50s. Slight breeze. It's, it's a pretty good day. Uh, I'm in a crew neck right now. And that should be enough to do me over the, you know, for the rest of the game. But you know, I, I can understand the need for a jacket. Long sleeves. Nice day, but a bit brisk. 1-0 to Lachinsky. Blowing inside. Ball two. Tigers come in hot Tuesday night. Played a close one with Peoria Notre Dame, very stout Irish team. Lost that one nine to six and then dominated Peoria High School, a 31 to nothing win for the Tigers in that one. Tuesday night doubleheader in the city of Peoria. They come into this one five and 11 and rolling. This is down to third base in foul territory. Count now at two and two. Anna Lachinsky at the plate. Leo Lachinsky would be next. She's the third baseman for Centennial. Top of the first, runner in scoring position. And this is going to be enough for her to try and steal third, and she'll do so. Leong to third. And now the count is full with two outs and a runner at third. So let's see how Raven Russell attacks this. 
pitch in there for a strike and fouled back to the backstop. Would have been a would have been a strike, I should say, had it not been fouled away. Pretty good pitch there, full count situation. And we'll do it again. And ball four, so Hannah Lachinsky draws a walk and Lee Lachinsky do up. Runners at the corners and two outs. So the sack fly out of the equation. It's gonna have to be a base hit or something like that to drive the run home. This is a pop fly that won't clear the infield, actually does clear the infield barely. Onto the outfield grass goes Maddie Sanders. She'll lead off the bottom of the first for the Tigers and she records the third out. So Centennial strands two and we're scoreless after a half inning of play here in Urbana. It'll be Megan Weiss, the catcher for Centennial, leading things off in the top of the second. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for our Urbana Tigers. Maddie Sanders made the play. The third out of the top of the first at shortstop will lead things off. And it's Lauren Madsen in center field, bats second. Aaron Wright at third base, bats third. Shea Feller in right field, bats fourth. Mercedes Williams in left field, bats fifth. Kinsey Smith, the designated hitter, bats sixth. Esri Vesley at second base will bat seventh. Nikki Gremmer at first base, bats eighth. And Cassidy Russell is behind the plate, rounds out the order. She will bat ninth for the Tigers here today. The Tigers are coached by Billy Harmon, and they enter this one 5-11. and 11. Centennial has two wins to their credit, so... Both teams looking to score a win here as we move into the stretch portion of the season. And a busy week ahead next week for the Tigers. I believe they play five games, uh, partially due to all of the postponements that the weather has caused thus far this spring. It's been pretty nasty. Lots of rain and cold and just blah. So fortunate, fortunate to have such a great day for softball here today. On the mound, for Centennial, Nini, uh, Nini Leong. And behind the plate for Centennial, Megan Weiss. <laughs> Centennial wrapping up their infield here. And the Tigers, you know, they have a pretty good first half of the lineup. That top three, uh, Maddie, Lauren, and Aaron, good contact, and, and they can hit for power, too. Lauren Madsen hit a home run on Tuesday. And then you move into the power portion of the lineup, Shea and Mercedes. Uh, they can go deep seemingly every game. It's been a pretty good season for Shea, and Mercedes led the team in home runs last season, so... Tigers have a pretty strong lineup if they're on. As Maddie Sanders set to step into the batter's box. Announced earlier this week that she will be attending Cal Berkeley for college next year. So congratulations to her on that commitment. And the first pitch from Leong is forthcoming. In there for strike one. Look at the rest of the infield for Centennial. Ashley Kirby at first base, second baseman Eddie Archer, third baseman is Leo Lachinsky, and Hannah Lachinsky is at shortstop. Weiss behind the plate, and the second pitch to her is going to be strike two. So Sanders is behind. Let's see if she can battle back. Facing an 0 2 count. The pitch chopped foul to the backstop. Pitch was a little high, not sure if it would have been a called strike three or ball one. In any case, we'll do it again. The count's still 0-2. And that'll be ball one, so a one and two count. And Weiss and Leong are going to talk things over here. Sanders will step out of the batter's box to get some practice swings in. She 
She'll go over and talk to Coach Harmon. Formulate a strategy here. And again, Matson on deck and Aaron Wright in the hole. And Leong back out to the mound. Outside, ball two. This is a varsity JV doubleheader. So the JV teams from Urbana and Centennial in the stands right now, just hanging out, ready to play following the varsity game. Two and two with Sanders at the plate, and she'll pop one into the outfield, lined and off of the glove of center fielder Lady. And Sanders is going to be in there at second base. Kylie Lady couldn't make the play out there in center field. I'd probably rule that an error myself. And now with the runner in scoring position and no outs, here's Lauren Matson. That's in ball one. Trying to cut back on swinging at those first pitch, uh, first pitches. Fortunate there that it was a ball. And the one and oh on the way. Fouled. Into the parking lot and won't quite reach Washington Street. Oh, yes it will roll onto the street. One and one. Right back up the middle, could score Sanders. It's into center field. Maddie will actually hold it first, or uh, at third rather, Lauren in at first. And runners at the corners for the third baseman, Aaron Wright. I thought that might have been enough to score Maddie. I'm not, it would have been close, don't get me wrong. Solid single for Lauren, and here's Aaron Wright. Mentioned usually the catcher for the Tigers at third base today. Dangerous at the plate, awaits the first pitch from the Ong. It's gonna be Matson in motion towards second base. She's in there safely and Sanders to home. She'll score the first run of the game for the Tigers. The old double steal there. And it's, it's very hard to get that runner heading to the plate when you make that throw to second base. Well executed, Matson safe at second. And Sanders slides into the plate to give the Tigers the lead. So 1-0 for the Tigers. No outs. Runner in scoring position for Aaron. And she's now behind 0-2. First pitch was a strike. So down on the count 0-2 here with Shea Feller on deck. And grounded to short, will trickle into the outfield, bobbled out there in center field, and Matson will hold it third. Aaron stays at first, and the same situation we saw moments ago for Shea Feller, runners at the corners, and no one out. And the Tigers now have that one nothing advantage, so that could be big for them. It, and Aaron will take second. Wisely no throw to second base. The Chargers weren't going to let that same thing happen again. 1-0 and the count to Shea. And yeah, having this one nothing lead early on really lets you just relax, open up, and, and try and push some more runs across. Shea takes an inside ball, too. On deck, Mercedes Williams, and then we would see Kinsey Smith. And foul to the backstop. It'll be two and one. Now, if you're Shea, you don't need to do too much here. Just a bloop into the outfield is almost definitely going to score Lauren, and depending on where it's hit, could score Aaron, too. Two and one. The count. And she checked your swing there. It's going to be strike two, two and two. Pitch had some action on it. 
count even with two in scoring position and no outs. Pretty big jam for Leong too. Let's see if she can get out of this. As this is pretty well struck down the first base line and foul over the fence and into our parking lot. Still two and two, a pretty good battle brewing here. Leong and Weiss are gonna talk it over. Quick chat and back to their respective positions. First base coach for the Tigers is Emily Warner, before I forget. Still two and two. And another ball she got quite a bit of, but it's fouled onto Washington Street behind the third base dugout. See quite a few of those over the course of the game. And ch checked her swing, made contact with that one. Wasn't quite a bunt, although it had the same effect. Without, of course, the out, two and two. Still our count. Leong on the mound and Feller at the plate. It's turned into a battle of wills here. And the two and two is fouled to the backstop again. Neither side giving in. And still on deck, Mercedes Williams. Outside, ball three, so a full count. Sadie's has been waiting a while, and I think this one might be reaching its conclusion. We'll see. Full count. Leong versus Feller, and Feller fouls one away. We'll do it again. What a great at-bat it's been for Feller. Uh, win, lose, or draw. She's worked that pitch count and just put herself in a great position to get a favorable outcome. We'll see how it pans out, but these are the kind of at-bats that you like to see. She swings and misses. That'll be strike three, but a well-fought battle, and we'll see what Sadie's can do in her first plate appearance today. First strike out of the side, or first strike out of the game, I should say, for either side. And the power threat, Mercedes Williams into the batter's box. And pops this one, it'll go barely over the backstop and caught by the catcher for the Tigers baseball team, Trey King, in attendance today. That could be about to leave, but he was in the right place at the right time. Caught that. And the 0-1 forthcoming to Williams. And she golfs at this one, pops it up, barely into the outfield grass, and it's going to fall. Runners will all hold, and the bases will be loaded for Kinsey Smith. Second error of the game for the Chargers. Miscommunication there, you got a call for that. You've got a call for that. I mean, you, you, you got to communicate and let your fielders know who's going to get that to avoid a situation where that happens. And Kinsey Smith has the bases loaded. Reset things for you. It was Maddie Sanders who led things off with that line drive into center field that was dropped. And E8 later came around to score. Right now it's Lauren Madsen at third base, Aaron Wright at second base, and Mercedes Williams at first. At the plate is Kinsey Smith, and on deck is Esri Vesley, the second baseman. Kinsey is our designated hitter today. On the mound for the Chargers, Nini Leong. Has not pitched a terrible frame so far. Just hasn't quite gotten the breaks that she would uh, probably like. And Megan Weiss is behind the plate. That's what you need to know. 1-0 for the Tigers. One out, and the base is loaded. And this is popped up. Caught at shortstop. Anna Lachinsky makes the play. And Esri Vesley, the second baseman, 
and for the Tigers. And, man, this would be huge for the Chargers if they could get out of it. I mean, this is a situation where if you escape this, having only surrendered one run, you're really happy, and that gives you some momentum. Besley's at the plate for the Tigers. And this is to second. Throw to first. Low throw, but it's scooped. And the Tigers will strand the bases loaded. We'll still go to the second with the Tigers. Up one nothing. And you know, credit to both sides there, uh, that half inning. Tigers hit the ball well to lead things off. Put themselves in a good position to score some runs. You know, straining the bases loaded. I mean, that happens from time to time over the course of the season. A fly out to short and a ground ball to second. I mean, they hit the ball. They, they set themselves up for success. And then how about the Chargers to battle back through that adversity? Yeah, I mean, it was a rough start to the frame for them. And they battled back. Kept their cool and, and made the plays they needed to make. So we are in the top of the second, and the score is Urbana 1, Centennial nothing. I'm Joey Wright. Jason Liggett is behind our camera today. Not doing too much. It's, it's a softball game. The cameras don't move much, so free, uh, free softball for Mr. Liggett today. And a warm welcome to our viewers watching on Facebook Live and Urbana Public Television. First pitch to Megan Weiss, the catcher. Ball one. Tigers athletic director Steve Waller in the house today. Got his uh, sunglasses on, nice Under Armour hoodie over there. He's just chatting with the fans. Swing and a miss for strike one. And a pretty good crowd here at the softball field today, you know. 4.30 start uh, right outside the high school. On a beautiful day, why not come out and watch the softball? You know, so I see some parents. The, the JV teams being out here kind of helps that atmosphere. As Russell's battled back, it's a full count now. To Weiss, Ashley Kirby, the first baseman on deck. And a walk, leadoff walk, drawn by Weiss. So it's Ashley Kirby in, runner at first, no one out. Casey Pickens, the designated hitter on deck. And the first pitch to Kirby, strike one, a swinging strike. And a bunt from Kirby will go foul. Wright came in, fielded it in foul territory, so we'll do it again, 0-2 now on the count. And two into the parking lot. Doesn't hit a car in the air. It bounces. That one's going to go pretty far. And that's probably the one downside of the softball field is that those foul balls can cost you a windshield. This barely lands in foul territory. Would have been a single if it had been just a few inches to the left. <clears throat> and Kirby will do it again. Did I, did I make a mistake? Ah. Right back up the middle, just under the glove of Vesley. This is going to move Weiss to third base. The throw is not in time. And to second base goes Ashley Kirby. So now the Chargers in business with no one out. Big time situation for Casey Pickens. 
the designated hitter. All she's in the game to do is hit. Tries to drop down a bunt, it's in the dirt, ball one. Whoa, slipped out of the, out of the hand of Russell there, and Cassidy Russell. Let that get to the backstop, so that was almost disaster for the Tigers, they recovered. 2-0, and, oh, and, and Raven throws hard. So that'll happen from time to time. Inside, it's 3-0, pickoff, throw down to third, and Wright comes up with it. 3-0, Tigers flirting with disaster here. On deck, Julia Lee, the right fielder. And a high ball four. If I'm the Tigers here, I call a meeting and, and get this figured out. They won't, and the bases are loaded with nobody out for Julia Lee, the right fielder, strike one. So a nice job from Raven Russell to fight back. Good news for the Tigers is that there's a force at any base. This is lined down the third base line. It lands fair. It'll plate one for the Chargers. Second runner coming home is Ashley Kirby. She'll score, and just like that, Centennial leads two to one on an RBI single from Julia Lee. Back to the top of the order, and Kylie Lady, the center fielder, flew out to first base her first time up. Strike one to her. <laughs> and in the dirt for ball one. That uh, left field corner is going to be tough for me to see today, folks. From where I'm seated, I can't see the, uh, the third base corner down there, the, the left field corner, outfield wall. and Russell, that's going to drop fair under her glove, or not under her glove, it, it was beyond her glove. Couldn't quite make the play, and the base is loaded, uh, loaded again for the Chargers. Still nobody out. And Nini Leong, the pitcher, could help her own cause in a big way right here. And fouled right back to the backstop. We'll do it, do it again. Still on the top of the second. Nobody out, and the base is loaded for the Chargers. Into right center, over is Shea. She'll make the play. Tagging and coming home from third, Casey Pickens will score. Casey Pickens comes home to score. And Julia Lee. And Kylie Lady held at first and second respectively. Now it's Addie Archer, the second baseman. <clears throat> Drew a walk in her first plate appearance. And is ahead 2-0. Oh. After Archer, it would be Hannah and Leah Lachinsky lined between short and third. Could score a run, and it will. From second comes Julia Lee. And the Chargers adding to their lead. It is now three to one. Lady advanced to second, and Archer to first. RBI single for her. Hannah Lachinsky, the shortstop. Due up, reached base her first time at the plate. 
And foul to the backstop. Outside, ball one, one and one. Look good to me, but it's called ball three, three and one to Archer. One out and runners at first and second. And she grounds one to right at third. She'll step on the bag for the out and we have two away. Heads up play from Aaron Wright to get the force out at third. Retires Kylie Lady. Eddie Archer goes to second. And Hannah Lachinsky reaches first base on the fielder's choice. To short and Sanders. Sanders the throw across the diamond is high and Grimmer comes down on the bag with it for the third out. So the Tigers will escape the top of the second but not before they surrender. Three runs. Four runs, and the Chargers with a four to one lead. Yeah, I had uh, forgotten to fill in the uh, Case Pickens run on my scorecard. So a four, uh, four one lead, four one lead for the Chargers after one and a half innings. To the bottom of the second we go, and leading things off for the Tigers will be Nikki Grimmer, the first baseman. Then Cassie Russell, a catcher, and we'll go back to the top of the order. It was the six, seven, eight, and nine hitters for the Chargers that came home to score that last half inning. Weiss, Kirby, Pickens, and Lee. So solid production from the bottom half of the lineup. <clears throat> and that's what you need if you want to win these crosstown rivalry games. <laughs> As Leon comes back out for another half inning. And she, she pitched well getting out of that jam in the top of the first, bottom of the first, I should say. Tigers left the bases loaded. We'll see how they bounce back from that. Striding in, Nikki Grammer, the first baseman, her first plate appearance of the afternoon. Strike one. Nice first strike in there from Leong. Goes after a high one and almost fielded by Lachinsky over there at third. She dove, couldn't quite make the play. No fault of hers though, that was a tough one to get to. Off her glove. Still rule it an error in E5 and Grimmer's at first and Russell's at the plate. Strike one. After Cassidy, the order flips over and we're back to Maddie Sanders. She's on deck. Bunt attempt from Russell, foul. 0 oh 2. The 0-2. Russell still shows bunt. Grammer's going to try and take second. The slide. She's in in time. She's safe. Close play over there in second base, but Nikki Grammer's got herself second base. A nice steal there, and she just got in safely. Let me tell you, folks, that was close. One and two now to Cassidy Russell with the runner in scoring position. Does that change anything? 
She still shows Bunt. Bunt is dropped down the first baseline. She's tagged out, and Grimmer will advance to third base. So a runner at third for the top of the order, and Maddie Sanders due in for the Tigers. Scored the lone run of the game so far for the Tigers. Remember, she reached on that error in center field one inning ago and came around to score. Ball one is high. Lauren Matson on deck, then we'd see Aaron Wright. We won't see it here with the runner at third, but the Tigers love to do that. Every time they get a runner at first, not every time, but most of the time, they'll try and just bunt her over, small ball. Make sure that run comes home, so you're at least trying to score at least one run per half inning is the, the intent. And it's set them up for success now. You got a runner at third and one out, top of your order. One and one is in there. A slow breaking ball on the outside part of the plate is good for strike two. See how Sanders approaches this. And lined right back to second base, easy play. Made by Addie Archer. And now two outs for Lauren Madsen. Madsen with a runner at third. Takes a high ball one. Looking at the defensive alignment for the Chargers, the middle of the infield wide open. Inside, ball two. Third baseman playing in, looks like a little bit as well. Two and oh, swing and a miss, strike one. Two one. High ball three. Should Lauren reach base? Aaron Wright do in. Tigers would love to have her up with runners at the corners if Madsen could draw the walk. Madsen, who led the team in batting average last season, takes ball four, and it's Aaron Wright with a chance to give the Tigers some momentum. Couldn't give them the lead could tie it up with a home run, or could cut into the lead with a base hit. She's one for one, singled an inning ago, and takes strike one, and an inside strike. Breeze is picking up, it's blowing out towards right field. And right swings, pops it up. This is going back and we are tied at four. Aaron Wright, a three run home run. And just like that, a new ball game here in the bottom of the second. Wynn picked it up. Huh? Yeah, it was close to our center field camera out there. And Aaron Wright ties us up at four. So now due in for the Tigers is Shea Feller. She struck out in the first inning. One and oh. And a foul ball. And you know, that, that Aaron hitting a home run there was big. 
uh, especially with two outs. But now we're in the power part of the Tigers lineup in, in Shea and Mercedes. And those girls can go deep pretty frequently. High and tight, it's ball two. In the dirt, and they're gonna say that Shea went. Strike two, two and two. Swing and a miss. That little, and they're gonna say it was a drop third strike, but a swing and a miss, and, and Shea's done that quite a bit, that little check swing. Checked it just enough to say she went around. That pitch was way outside. And, She's got her second strikeout of the game. So it's Mercedes Williams who will lead things off for the Tigers when the bottom of the third rolls around. We're tied at four going into the top of the third, and folks, don't go anywhere because we have quite the ball game on our hands. 4-4 four, four after two. So it will be Megan Weiss leading things off in the third for Centennial. She led things off in the second for the Chargers as well. Drew a walk, later came around to score. So the Tigers will look to avoid that fate. Uh, Raven Russell won't look to let her reach base. And after Weiss, it's Kirby and Pickens. And she fouls one behind the first base dugout. Someone said it hit a car over there. It did. Foul ball it claimed its first victim. To second and San or rather to short and Sanders. Throw across the diamond in time and one up, one down in the top of the third. Kirby and Pickens, the next two. Kirby's at first base. One for one, singled in the second. Each of the next four Centennial hitters reached base in that, uh, that four run second inning. So uh, Raven's gonna deal with some batters that have had a pretty good game here in the immediate future. It's 2-0 and oh now to Kirby. Three and oh, so Kirby's ahead in the count. She's done a pretty good job here. Strike one. We've seen both pitchers battle back from being behind in the count. Russell forces a ground ball to Aaron at third. Throw across the diamond in time. Two up and two down in the third. A 6-3 and then a 5-3 put out. So if you look at the trends, it'll be a ground out to second base from Pickens. You'd have a 6-3, a 5-3, and then a 4-3. As the designated hitter, Casey Pickens, looks at strike one. Chopped right back to Raven on the mound. Off her glove. Throw to first won't be in time. That'll be an error charged to Raven. and Not the, uh, yeah, it just, she had it and popped out of her glove. It happens. Strike one fired into Julia Lee, and, and you know, Raven can bounce back from that. Not a, not an error that should sink the Tigers' ship. Throw across the diamond from Aaron is in time. And just like that, the Tigers escape in the extended 
but uh, not inexcusable. Top of the third. Break. Yeah, no commercials on Urbana Public Television. As Urbana High School's legendary stats teacher, David Dutton, in attendance today. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and again, a big thanks to our viewers watching live on Facebook. First season that we've streamed the games live on that platform. And, of course, watching terrestrially on Urbana Public Television and on YouTube. The three ways you can find our broadcast. Big thanks to all of our viewers tuning in. And for those of our viewers watching live on Facebook, right now we had one viewer a few minutes ago, and whoever that one viewer is is seeing a pretty good game. Uh, it's 4-4 heading into the bottom of the third. And if that one viewer has uh, sent you a text and told you to flip things on, I'll, I'll recap things if you're just joining us. It was a one run first inning for the Tigers. Maddie Sanders reached on an error and came around to score. However, the Tigers left the bases loaded in that top of the first. And then in the top, I should say bottom of the first, it was the top of the second, when the Chargers bounced, bounced back, scored four runs. And the Tigers answered back uh, in the bottom of the second with a three-run home run from Aaron Wright. As this is going to fall, Mercedes Williams reaches first on another error. So, Sadie's to first. Kenzie Smith, the DH, stands in. Let's see if the Tigers employ their small ball tactics that they love. Nope, this is popped up to short. And Sadies will get back to first. The throw skips past the first baseman. And Mercedes looked at trying to take second. Will stay at first. Esri Vesley, the second baseman in for Urbana. 0 for 1, lined out to second base in her first plate appearance. Swing and a miss. Sadie's trying to take second, and she's in safely, the throw. Trickled into the outfield. It wasn't caught at second base. So a runner in scoring position with one out for Esri Vesley. Tied at four in the bottom of the third. Strike one. One and two. Popped up, right back to the pitcher's circle. It's fielded and two outs for Nikki Grimmer. Grimmer reached on an error and later came around to score as part of Aaron's home run. So she kicked off that rally for the Tigers. Actually let off the bottom of the second. Grounded to third, into the outfield. Sadie's rounds third, she's gonna come home. The throw is not in time. And the Tigers take a 5-4 lead. To second base goes Grammer. She's had quite the game. Now responsible for an RBI. Sadie's comes home and the Tigers lead. To say the throw was not in time is probably not entirely correct. The throw was in time. It would have been close, but it wasn't caught and there was no tag. So five to four, Tigers back out in front. And it's Cassidy Russell. Remember she dropped down a bunt and was tagged out by Leong on what was the 
first out of the second inning. High ball one. Strike two. The order would flip over after Russell, and we'd go to the top of the order, and Maddie Sanders. Two outs, bottom three. Tigers up by one. Russell showing bunt. It goes back to Leong. Covering first is the second baseman, Addy Archer, and the throw is in time for out number three. So we will see the top of the order for the Tigers leading off the fourth. Maddie Sanders, Lauren Manson, Aaron Wright. So we go to the top of the fourth now and leading things off for Centennial. Hey, look at that. It's also the top of the order for them. Kylie Lady, Mimi Leong, and Addie Archer. 5-4 Tigers after three. Been a bit of a slower game than we saw a week ago against normal community. Tigers didn't register a hit in that one. And we were out of here in about an hour. It's taken us about 40 minutes to get through three innings here, so. But that's the price you pay for what's been a much better game. Now the Chargers in, top of the fourth, trying to erase a one-run deficit. And they're off to a good start as Kylie Lady lines a single into center field. That's her second single of the game. She's now two for three. And Nini Leong 0 for 1, but with a sack fly in the second inning. Popped up. To the mound, and Russell makes the catch, one out. Staying at first, of course, Kylie Lady, because why would you tag up on a pop fly right back to the pitcher? Meaning we've got a runner at first for Addie Archer with one out. Strike one. Lined into left field, Mercedes Williams, the catch, throw back to first, there will be no throw back to first, but that forced Kylie Lady to hustle back in because she was going with the pitch, it was caught by Sadie's in left, and she had to hustle back to first because she was darn near at second base. Into the street. <laughs> Car swerved to avoid it there. <laughs> Probably not necessary, but into the outfield. And runners will hold it second and first. So Hannah Lachinsky with the single, and it's Leah Lachinsky now. 0 for 2. Two on, two outs, center field and deep, and the Chargers will go ahead. A three-run home run from Leah Lachinsky gives them a 7-5 lead. Strap in, folks, we've got a good one. Three-run home run will drive in Hannah Lachinsky and Kylie the Lady. And we 
we've got a wild one on our hands. Megan Weiss, the catcher, do it. 0 for 1 with a walk. Scored a run in the second inning. And the pitch is low for ball one. Ball two. Ball three, three and oh. On deck, Ashley Kirby. Kirby's one for two. Weiss 0 for one, takes strike one. And you look at Weiss and the next three batters have all scored at least once today. Strike two, full count and two outs. Bases are clear. Pitch from Russell, chopped to short. Sanders takes a bad hop right before it reaches her glove. And a first will go Weiss. Nothing Maddie could do there. She came in, fielded it as you're supposed to, and just caught a bad hop. Swing and a miss from Kirby. Popped up, playable, and no one gets there in time. No one too. On deck would be Pickens. Fouled right back to the backstop. A little tailgating experience over there in the parking lot. One gentleman has climbed atop a pickup truck and he's watching the game from an elevated vantage point. Just when you think you've seen it all. Yeah, he doesn't have he doesn't have a very good escape path. If a foul ball were to uh, come at him, dive off the truck perhaps. Still 0-2 to Kirby. And right back to the backstop, we'll do it again. Still 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's the top of the fourth. Tigers get out of it, but not before the Chargers plate three runs on a three-run home run from Leo Lachinsky to take a 7-5 lead. 7-5 Chargers after three and a half. Stand up and stretch time here in Urbana. We don't play nine innings, we play seven, so. The fourth inning stretch. Could be the fifth inning stretch too. So, and I mentioned back to the top of the order for Urbana. Maddie Sanders, Lauren Matson, Aaron Wright. Look at what Maddie's done today. Flew out to second base the second inning. Reached on an error in the first, later came around to score. Lauren Matson is one for one, singled in the first, and drew a walk in the second inning. And then Aaron Wright hit that three run home run in the second, also singled in the first inning. She is two for two.
So all three of the next three batters have reached base at some point, somehow for the Tigers. And it's Sanders settling in to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Ball one. Ball two. Mentioned Sanders going to Cal Berkeley next year. It's pretty neat. Found the backstops where Aaron Rodgers played college football. And I'm sure other people have gone there too. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I the Cal, the Golden Bears. Chopped to short. Fielded. Throw is in time, and Sanders goes down to lead off the top of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth. You know, I, I keep making that mistake today. I don't usually do that. I'm usually pretty good with the top and bottom of these frames, but we are indeed in the bottom of the fourth, folks. It's been a long week, I can tell you that. Strike one to Matson, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fatigued. It's been a long week, you know. I, it was hard waking up this morning. I think I was dehydrated. So I need to start drinking more water. I've been big on LaCroix of late as this is into the outfield. And Madsen will hold up at first in the throw. We've got some errors now in the throw. Chargers still can't get a grip on it. Now they do, but not before Madsen is in at second base. The throw wild back into the infield and Madsen had a base hit, scored a single, and then was able to reach second once things started going awry for the Chargers. Now it's Aaron Wright at the plate. Three run home run earlier with the Tigers down three. Now the Tigers are down two. Could tie it up here with a home run or could cut into the lead with a base hit. Same thing that could have been said in the second inning. Strike one. On deck is Shea Feller, who struck out twice. One on and one out. Leong on the mound. Strike two. It's not actually a mound. It's, it's a flattened softball, but I still call it a mound. And the one and two. Skips to the catcher, Weiss, ball two. And grounded to second, will advance Mats into third. Wright is thrown out at first. Shea Feller in with a runner at third and two gone. Time is called here. Going to get a conference between Weiss and Leong. It's Feller at the plate. I mentioned has struck out twice. Mercedes Williams now on deck. Has reached twice on two errors scored in the third inning. But to get to that point, Feller has to reach base for the first time today. It's been those check swings that have been her demise today. She's got to commit. Strike one. Base hit will score Madsen. Middle of the infield wide open for Feller. And it's right over the second baseman's head. Madsen will come home and score, and Shea Feller, an RBI single, Cuts the Tigers' deficit to one. That is great situational hitting. Great clutch performance 
Madsen comes home to score, and now Mercedes Williams, a runner at first and two away. Strike one, and Mercedes was swinging for the fence there. We've seen her do that before today. Uh, recall her ball in the first inning that fell between some fielders in the, the shortstop area. She was golfing for it. This is lifted into left field and caught. So it doesn't quite clear the fence. Finds the glove of Julia. Julia Davis for the third out. So it'll be Kinsey Smith, Ezri Vesley, and Nikki Grammer for the Tigers in the bottom of the fifth. Top of the fifth now for the Chargers. They're up 7-6. And we'll see Casey Pickens, Julia Lee, and Kylie Lady. Played four innings. It's taken us about an hour to get through them. 5.25 we got going at 4.30. Lifted to second, and it will be Vesley stepping on first in a collision. And down goes Pickens. And she's down pretty hard, but moving. Ooh, that was a, that was a tough collision over there at first. Let's hope she's okay. Folks, you never like to see that. I didn't see where she got tagged exactly. There was a lot going on though. The the grounder, or it was it was hit in the air to first. Um, and the first baseman for the Tigers, Nikki Grammer, she couldn't quite field it. It was Ezri Vesley who came in, picked the ball up, ran over to second base, ran over to first base rather, the bag. Stepped on the bag, but then there was a collision between Pickens and Vesley. And Pickens is now up. Applause from the players and, and spectators. Looked like she was holding her face. That's uh, it's mine. Yeah. It's all, it's all good. Don't worry about it. No, it's it's, it's my right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right, right. No, I I I get it. No, Sorry, you got You're fine. No, I. And so Pickens was help, helped off the field. The out was recorded. And the next pitch to Julia Lee is fouled onto Washington Street. Strike two. Ball one. So, yes, Casey Pickens helped off the field. I don't know where the I don't know where she went, but uh, being tended to looked like she was okay. And, and you know, it's just one of those softball plays. No malicious intent, of course, on on any side. Um, you know, just a collision. They happen, and we'll, we'll move on from it. This is lined foul down the third base line. So one out, uh, 
One and two now to Lee. And another sharp liner down the third base line is foul. Foul tip right back to Russell. She couldn't catch it, and we'll do it again. Still one and two. Order flips over, and we're back to Kylie Lady. And the top of the order on deck. Up the middle, this will be a base hit for Lee. And Kylie Lady. Two for three with one out and a runner on. Tipped into Russell's glove, strike one. Lifted. Left center at the wall, it falls. Chugging round second is Lee. She'll get into third safely. Throw looked like it pulled right a little off the bag. And two in scoring position now for the Chargers with one out. And Nene Leong, rather, the pitcher. Double for Lady that nearly cleared the wall for a home run. And Leong, 0 for 2, but with a sack fly in the second. Chargers would love another one of those right here. Ball two. High for ball three. And a walk for Leong. So that'll load up the bases with one out for Eddie Archer. Archer one for three. Strike one, grounded out to the pitcher in the first inning, singled in the second, and flew out to left field one inning ago. And fair ball down the third base line. Now called foul. Originally called fair, called foul now, so it'll be 0 and 2. 0 and 2 for Archer. Ball one. Now remember the Chargers worked out of a jam like this in the first frame. Tigers had the bases loaded with one out. They ended up stranding the bases loaded. So if the Tigers can force a similar result here, we'll see. Wright picks it up, throw it to home plate for the force. And we have two outs now. Tigers one out away. From getting out of it. And it's Hannah Lachinsky. Reached first in the first inning. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. And a single in. The fourth and a grand slam here in the fifth. It was Lee Lachinsky with a three-run home run in the fourth and a grand slam for Hannah Lachinsky in the fifth inning. Puts the Chargers up in a pretty big way. Third home run of the game, second home run of the game for Centennial. Go, go, go. 
and an 11 6 lead for the Chargers. It's Leo Lachinski at the plate now. Left center. Ball's at the wall. She'll have a double, maybe more. Well, maybe more had the throw been wild into second and a double for Leo Lachinski. She's now a two for four. And in strides, Megan Weiss walked in the second, grounded out too short in the third, and reached on an error. An inning ago. Into the parking lot. And it hits a car. That was a good one. Not if you own the car, but it was a, made a loud noise. Looked like it caught the, the back bumper of a Volkswagen. Lifted into right center. Charging home as Lachinsky, she'll score. And I, an RBI single for Weiss. 12-6, the lead for the Chargers. They're pouring it on. And it's Ashley Kirby, the ninth batter of the frame. So if she gets on, the Chargers will have batted around. Kirby singled in the second. And this will find Washington Street. Foul ball behind the backstop. Foul ball. I mentioned singled in the third, grounded out to third in the third, and Singled in the first, grounded out to third in the third, and then struck out in the fourth inning. Another foul ball, still 0-2. Leading things off for the Tigers in the bottom half, Kinsey Smith. Swing and a miss, and that ends the top of the fifth, but not before. A grand slam helps the Chargers to a 12-6 advantage. And it's Kinsey Smith due in for the Tigers. Joining us, it's 12-6 favoring Centennial. Tigers due in to start the bottom of the fifth frame. Again, I'm Joey Wright, Jason Lincoln behind our camera today on what is a beautiful Thursday afternoon for baseball. Temperatures in the mid 50s, there is a little breeze. Little breeze, but nothing too detrimental to us enjoying a Beautiful afternoon here at the old ball yard. It's been a wild back and forth affair. Chargers went down one nothing early, claimed a 4-1 lead. And then Aaron Wright hit a three run home run that tied us up at four. Tigers went ahead 5-4 and then the Chargers have answered back. 12-6 is our score. 
right now, aided by a three-run home run from Leah Lachinsky and then a grand slam from Hannah Lachinsky. So just on those two home runs alone, seven RBI from Leah and Hannah Lachinsky. And that's been the story of the game. Kinsey Smith in for the Tigers. Chops one foul down the third base line. Centennial has made some errors out there in the field, but you know those have largely not affected the lead that they've been able to build. Here's Smith, bloops one into left center, it falls. And Kinsey Smith leads things off with a single for the Tigers. That's exactly what they want to see, and it's Ezri Vesley due in. 0 for 2, trying to turn that around with Nikki Gremmer now on deck. Time is called. Weiss is going to go out and talk with Leong. Tigers don't have a ton of pitching depth as this game moves along, and that'll be something to keep an eye on. Right now it's Raven Russell pitching for the Tigers. We'll see what direction they like to go when we get to the top of the sixth, but the only available pitcher they have is Autumn Dysart. Strike one to Esri. Marley Glenn still recovering from a concussion. She's the only other pitcher the Tigers have. They've only got three who pitch regularly, of course. They probably got some people they can go to in an emergency, but I don't think that this would constitute an emergency. As Vesley loops out to uh, shortstop. Nikki Grammer has reached base twice today, scored in the second inning. Actually kicked off the little rally that the Tigers were able to mount in the second. She was the first batter to reach base in the second inning. Lauren Madsen drew the walk. And uh, then Aaron hit the home run that, at the time, tied the game up. Strike inside, taking off for second and reaching second base safely. Was a, it's a pinch runner over there. I think that's Raven Russell. I just say softball, the pitcher doesn't bat, or doesn't have to bat. Well, hold on, I got that wrong. Reaching first base safely, there is Grimmer. So in IHSA softball, you can have a fielder uh, not bat. In this case, it's the pitcher for the Tigers, Raven Russell, but I'm not quite sure why she would be able to come in. Oh, because Kinsey is a designated hitter, I guess? I don't know. Dropping down a bunt is Cassidy, and everyone's safe. The bases are loaded, and we go back to the top of the order and Maddie Sanders. Cassidy, she's tried to bunt all game, finally finds some success there. Bases are loaded, and with the Tigers down six runs, this is exactly what they want to see. It's Maddie Sanders in with one out, swings and misses. And Weiss couldn't quite field it, but now she'll uh, she'll get it. it. It's a pretty shallow distance from the mound to the backstop here in Urbana, so she was able to field that and, and uh, pick it up with no problems. Nobody scored. It's called a strike. 0-1 to Sanders, and she lifts one. Center field going back. It is going to fall. One run's going to score. Now here's Grimmer coming home, and that's going to be an RBI single for Sanders. She plates two. Grimmer and Kinsey both came home to score. Russell made it to third. Sanders held it first. And runners at the corners, and one out for Lauren Matson. With Aaron right now on deck and Shea Feller to follow. First pitch is high, Sanders takes second with ease. Oh. 
Swing and a miss, one and one to Matson. So she, she's got two runners in scoring position. You don't see a ton of double plays in high school softball, but that threat largely eliminated, at least the traditional 6-4-3 or 4-6-3 double play. Ball two, two and one. Matson led the team in batting average last season. Two and one. Swing and a miss, two and two. The count even with one out. And the Tigers down 12 8. Bottom five, one out. Two in scoring position, second and third. Two and two is high, and the count now full. Big situation here for the Tiger senior. Tense moment, full count offering. On the way, popped up. This will fall. Coming home is Russell. And a 12-9 lead for the, for the Chargers. The Tigers fighting back. RBI single for Matson. Maddie Sanders held at second base. Twelve nine, the deficit the Tigers are faced with here. Aaron Wright tied things up with a three-run homer a while back. Takes strike one. On deck is Shea Feller. Here's right, big situation. Lined right back to short, and the Tigers are gonna get doubled off. Sanders was in motion for third, hit and run. Doesn't go the way of the Tigers there, and they will strand runners at second and first. And we're gonna go to the sixth inning with the Tigers down 12-9. And we're approaching the top of the sixth. Just joining us, the Chargers are up 12 to nine. New pitcher for the Tigers is Autumn Dysert. Ball one. At the plate for the Chargers is Casey Pickens, the DH. Ball one, it's one and oh. Two and zero, rather. Drops down the bunt. Charging is right. Throw to first. There's going to be no throw to first. Casey Pickens leads. The, well, rather, uh, Julia Julia Davis. Casey Pickens was injured an inning ago. That's Julia Davis who's at first now. Drops down the bunt single. Davis has been the left fielder all game. This is grounded to Sanders, could be two. Throw to Vesley for one, and the throw to first, not in time, but that was close. Oh, 
Julia Leon with a fielder's choice. Foul to the backstop. Popped up. Playable for, uh, that's Matson over there at first now. Couldn't make the play, and that's tough because it goes into the shadow there, and, and uh, she couldn't make the catch there. Oh, and two though, to uh, Kylie Lady. High for ball one. There have been some changes here. Uh, Dysert's on the mound, I mentioned. Raven Russell's in center field now. Vesley's at second, but Matson's the first baseman. Grounded to Sanders, flip to Vesley. She can't catch it. And Lady will reach first. The Chargers, two on and one out. With Nini Leong, two in for Centennial. And what a game she's had. Drew a walk in the first inning, a sack fly in the second. Flew out to the mound in the fourth inning, and drew a walk in the fifth. So she's 0 for 1 with four plate appearances. Lifted center field, Russell charging, it falls in front of her. And the bases will be loaded for the Chargers with one out. Big situation here as they look to pull away again. It's been a wild one. And it's Addie Archer in to try and get something going for the Chargers. Swings and misses at strike one. Bases are loaded 12-9 for Centennial. We're in the top of the sixth with one out. Chops one to right under her glove, and it's going to get past Sanders as well. Plates one. It's going to score two for the Chargers, and they'll have runners at the corners in and out. 14-9, to nine, the Chargers go ahead again, or stay ahead, rather, and add to their lead. It was Lady and Lee that came home to score. Leong to third, and Archer... To first, now in for the Chargers, Hannah Lachinsky, a grand slam an inning ago. That at the time gave the Chargers a 12-6 lead, now a 14-9 lead. With an out and runners at the corners. Ball one high, or, well, yeah, ball one was high, and the throw to third, not in time. Ball two. Whoever climbed up onto that truck left a big dent in it on the roof. Guy we told you about a few innings ago. That <laughs> I don't know why he did that. <laughs> two and one. Taking off for second is Archer. No throw. So two in scoring position, three and one count. In and out for Archer. Chopped foul down to the third baseline. The Charger dugout. Skips past Russell and will score a run. Leon comes home. Scores her second run of the game to give the Chargers a 15-9 lead. Archer took second, and Lachinsky, that was a walk. That was ball four. So it's Leah Lachinsky swinging and missing. Hannah Lachinsky takes second. Remember, Leah Lachinsky hit that three-run home run 
in the fourth that gave Centennial their second lead of the game that they've held since. Ball one is high. Off Sanders' glove, this will score Archer. 16 to nine the lead now for the Chargers. To third base goes Hannah Lachinsky and Lee Lachinsky to first. And due in Megan Weiss, the catcher. Foul behind the plate. Grounded to Sanders, throw to first is in time, so we have two outs, but coming home to score is Hannah Lachinsky. So it'll be 17 to nine, our new score. Weiss grounds out and it's Ashley Kirby, ball one. Right to Shea Feller in right field for the third out. But not before the Chargers get out to a 17 to nine lead. Tigers are going to have some, some work ahead of them here. Bottom of the sixth, due in Shea Feller, Mercedes Williams, and Kinsey Smith. Tigers need eight runs to tie, nine runs to jump ahead into the lead. Uh, perhaps easier said than done. And of course, a big thank you to our viewers on Facebook Live, Banner Public Television, and YouTube. Today, you've seen quite the offensive showing. 26 runs between these two teams. Heading into the bottom of the sixth. Unfortunately, the Tigers on the short end of that. Down by eight. Shea Feller in to try and get things kicked off for Urbana. Popped up, playable for Leong. She makes the catch. One up, one down. Mercedes Williams now in. Reached on an error in the first and third innings and then flew out to left field in the fourth. So 0 for 1. Swing and a miss, strike one. <laughs> Chopped foul down the line. Seems like we've seen that a lot today. And sometimes we see those uh, foul balls 
onto the street, the frequent flyers, or sometimes we see more grounders down the line. And we've seen a lot chop down that third base dugout. Sadie's takes ball one, one and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Down goes Sadie's and with two outs we will see Raven Russell, her first plate appearance of the day. Leading things off in the top of the seventh will be Julia Davis, Julia Lee, and Kylie Lady for the Chargers. Down the third baseline and gloved, rather the first baseline and stepping on the bag, the first baseman Ashley Kirby. Three up, three down for the Tigers in the sixth. So the eight, nine, and one hitters do up for the Chargers. They lead 17 to nine. Strike one to Davis. <laughs> Davis tries to bunt, goes to the backstop, foul ball, 0 and 2. On deck is Lee followed by Lady and Davis to third and right, picks it up, throw to first is in time, one up and one down in the top of the seventh. <laughs> Julia Lee, the right fielder, singled in the first, reaching a fielder's choice an inning ago. In total, she is one for three. One and oh, swing and a miss. One and one. Two and one. Chop back to Dysert. She'll throw, it's in time, two away. And in strides Kylie Lady. This is the sixth time she's come up to bat today. A testament to how good this Chargers offense has been. Tigers desperately need this third out as soon as they can get it to try and get some momentum going in the bottom half. To short and Sanders takes a bad hop and into the outfield it goes. Sadies will come in, pick it up, throw to Vesley at second. In a timely fan, uh, ma uh, fashion. I guess that's the word I want to use. Fashion or manner. And holding it first is Lady. <laughs> to second base will go Lady. And Leong. Or rather. Leong at the plate now. Ahead 2-0. Oh. Ball three. On 
deck, Addie Archer, second baseman. Leong showed bunt, didn't drop it down. Three and one. Grounded down the third base line, should score a run. Charging home is Lady. She'll score, throw it a second, not in time, and an RBI double for Nini Leal. <laughs> Addie Archer. This Centennial team looks a bit better than a team that's only won two games this season. Grounded to Sanders. Oh, she's going to field it and the throw to first. He's not in time, but man, what, a, what an effort that was. <laughs> she almost made that throw to first. That was a close play, too. It took me a minute to see what the call was. because. Could have gone either way. Now at the corners for Hannah Lachinsky. And Lachinsky will play to run. Chinsky and now what is a 19 to nine lead for Centennial. Line down the third base line and home run distance, but way foul. <laughs> Chopped foul, strike two. Hard liner to third, and foul. <laughs> Left center, it'll fall. One run will score for Centennial. This is gonna play two, and it is now 21 to nine for Centennial. Now in Megan Weiss, the catcher. Chop to Sanders, she'll make the throw to first. And the Tigers. Last chance for them. They need to recover 12 runs to tie, 13 runs to take the lead as we go to the bottom half of the ninth, of the seventh. We play seven innings, it's softball, not, not uh, Major League Baseball. JV to follow, I wonder if they'll have enough daylight to play their game. Seems like we've been here a while. They will have enough daylight, but. Shadows are getting long. It's about 6.10 here in Urbana right now. So let's see who's due up for Urbana, their last chance. It'll be Esri Vesley, Nikki Grimmer, Cassidy Russell. Uh, I think there have been some changes to the order here, so we'll, we'll see. It's gonna be Courtney Falk leading things off for the Tigers. 
and then we'll see what the order looks like. But it's Courtney Falcon for her first plate appearance. Strike one from Leong. <laughs> Looks like Grammar's still on deck. Oh, two. Or rather, uh, one and one and one. That's uh, call the ball. Into the parking lot. And it rattles between two cars, one and two. Swing and a miss, Falk strikes out. Grimmer in for the Tigers down to their last two outs. Ball one. <laughs> to the backstop and foul, it'll be one and one. On deck for the Tigers looks like Zoe Ford. One and one. The count to Grimmer, who's had a pretty good game so far. And into the parking lot, one and two. Inside for ball two. Two and two. This is going to fall. A single for Grimmer. Fair ball. She'll reach first, and Zoe Ford in for her first plate appearance. And for Ford, Maddie Sanders on deck. Strike one. Strike two to Ford. Runs inside and hits Ford with a 0-2 count. So Sanders to the plate with two on for the Tigers. And again, they're down 21-9. to nine. Sanders up the middle. Runners will hold, and the Tigers will have the bases loaded. Lauren Matson in for Urbana. 
Remember, they're down to their last two outs, so they need runs. 12 of them to be exact, and Madsen with a good chance to give them some here. Strike one. Over the glove of the second baseman. This will score a run for the Tigers and they'll keep it at that. They have 10 now and they're down 11. Aaron right in for the Tigers, hit a big three run homer earlier. Swing and a miss to right, strike one. Oh and one. Inside for ball one, one and one. High for ball two. Strike two. All three, full count. Full count, the base is loaded for the Tigers. Popped up, right field, carrying it is gonna drop at the wall and it's gonna score some runs for the Tigers. Wright's charging home, the Tigers are gonna score Two runs on that, an RBI double from right. Shea Feller in for the Tigers, who have made it a 10-run game in the seventh. Aaron Wright is at second base, and Lauren Madsen's at third base for the Tigers. One out, bottom seven. Popped up and caught, it's short. Two outs. Swing and a miss, strike one to Williams. <laughs> Fouled away from Mercedes, and that's what you like to see that would have hit her. Swing and a miss, fouled it away. Oh and two. Yeah. 
Williams strikes out that strike three. The Chargers win this one 21 to 12 for our whole crew. I'm Joey Wright for Jason Liggett. Final score, Centennial 21, Urbana 12.